Introduction to the Delta Y Transformer Connection, Part 7E. In this part, we're going to continue our discussion about the clock system that is used to describe the phase relationship between the Delta Y Transformer Connection and other Transformer Connections as well. So let's get started. So in the previous videos, we drew this diagram and really understood all of the pieces and how they all work together. What we concluded was that VAG on the high voltage side, that is used as a reference quantity. And we're comparing that to this VAG here that is also used as a reference. So these two pieces of information is critical. And what we ended up doing was drawing a phasor diagram. So we're gonna draw that very quickly right here. We said that if VAG, VBG, and VCG were a balanced system such that the phasors rotated in the counterclockwise direction and were an ABC phase sequence, then this transformer connection, which we know as a DAC, and we're claiming as a DYN11, this transformer connection will produce a resultant vector. Now, before we draw the resultant vector, we should really think about what it is that we really want. We really want to relate this reference voltage with this reference voltage. So to connect the dots, first we're going to perform this equation. And we've done this multiple times in the past, but I'm just gonna do it one more time here. So we know that VAG minus VBG is equal to VAB, right? We know this, and we've done this in the past multiple times. And we know that VAB, because this is a delta transformer connection, we know that VAB is equal to V phase A, right? Really, just by inspection, voltage AB, which is these two points here, are the same two points between here and here, which is equal to V phase A. So now we have to refer that back into our phasor diagram. So we perform the phasor diagram using the head to tail method by simply subtracting VAG minus VBG, which is gonna look something like this. So this right here is VBG, and our resultant vector will look something like that. That is equal to uh, VAB, and we know that VAB is equal to V phase A. The other thing that we said about V phase A, which is this guy here, is that it has the same phase angle as a secondary winding voltage, but a different magnitude. So that might look like something like this. So this yellow, we may be able to represent that as V phase A, which is equal to V A G. So V phase A has the same angle as the V phase A on the primary side, but a different magnitude. Now what we see here is that we have two voltages that we could compare. These are our reference voltages. And those two voltages are simply this voltage here and this voltage there. This is the primary uh, line to ground voltage and this right here is a secondary line to ground voltage. Now we've just reviewed what we talked about in the previous tutorial. This is how the clock system now works. So a clock system, just like a face of a clock, has 12 hands, right? It has 12, 6, 3, and 9. It also has 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 10, and 11. The way to describe this same relationship using the clock system is, is very easy. The only thing that we really have to keep in mind is the reference voltages. The reference voltages is VAG on the high voltage side and VAG on the low voltage side. So what we do is we take the high voltage line to ground voltage and we line it up with the 12, okay? And it's always the HV side first. HV side, the high voltage side, is always lined up with the, the 12, okay? And then we line up the phasers to see where the secondary line to ground voltage would fall, okay? So if we just, if we just rotate this phaser here, the entire phaser, if we just rotated it, you know, counterclockwise by 90 degrees, 
So if you just take everything rotated by 90 degrees counterclockwise, we'll see that V phase A or VAG on the low, so secondary side is going to fall like that, right? So this is VAG on the primary side and this is VAG on the secondary side. So that's how you set up the clock system using the phasor diagrams. Now, how do we interpret this? Like if we were given this diagram here, what information would we get out of it, All right? So the way we interpret this is that we know that the phasor that's pointing on the 12, we know that that's always the high voltage side, okay? And the other phasor that's pointing on the other number, we know that that is always the low voltage side. Okay, so the way that we would interpret this is that the low voltage reference quantity lags, it's always going to be lag, okay, the high voltage reference quantity by 11 times 30 or 330 degrees. So this 11 comes from the fact that the low voltage reference quantity is pointing at this 11 here. So that's pretty clear. And this 30 comes from the fact that in our phasor diagram, we always have a 30 degrees increment for the delta connection. So every delta connection is going to have some increment of 30 degrees. Okay. So the hands of a clock between 12 and 1, that represents 30 degrees. Between 1 and 2, that represents 30 degrees. And if you just count up all the way to 11, is 330 degrees or 30 times 11 330 degrees so it goes back to exactly what we were saying in the past we were saying that the secondary voltage which is here the secondary voltage um, the yellow phaser here that lags the primary voltage which is this guy here by 330 degrees as the phasers rotate in the counterclockwise direction, okay, given that it's an ABC phase sequence. Another way of saying that is that the secondary voltage, which is VAG again, leads the primary voltage by 30 degrees as the phasers rotate in the counterclockwise direction. So this is how we represent the clock system using this particular uh, phasor diagram and using this particular DAC or um, DYN11 transformer connection. So let's quickly talk about this representation. We already know what this DAC means. So let's quickly talk about this DY and 11 and understand where exactly each term means. So the D, this D represents that the transformer connection on the high voltage side, that is connected in delta. We don't know how the delta is configured, whether or not it's DAC or DAB. We don't know that information yet, but we know it's connected in delta, right? The capital D represents the high voltage side. The lowercase y, that represents the low voltage side, and we know that the low voltage side is connected in y, okay? And then the n, this here, represents that the low voltage neutral bushing, which is this right here, this neutral bushing is brought out, which means that the utility or whoever is using this transformer, they can actually ground it or leave it ungrounded. It only represents the fact that the neutral can be grounded if the user chooses to. And so this 11, this 11 represents the low voltage reference quantity lagging the high voltage reference quantity by 11 times 30 or 330 degrees. Another way of saying that is that the low voltage leads the high voltage by 30 degrees. Okay, so that is how this method of describing a delta Y transformer connection is described. In part 7F, 
we will use another reference quantity to describe the same exact principles. And um, uh, instead of using line to ground voltage quantities, we will use line current quantities to describe the phase relationship. And this method here, using the line currents, are a lot more simple and they make a lot more sense. Thank you.